Guys, is that really the safest idea? I don't know. But hey, everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Okamiden. In the last episode, we met with the celestial god of all penguins who gave us the power of guidance so that we can move Kuni separately from Chibi. And in this episode, we're going to be continuing through the Cave of Nagi slash River of Heavens in all of its beautiful glory. Seriously, I love those really faint clouds that are just going along. The Never mind. Let's just keep going. So, took a whole four episodes for it to happen, but this is the first video where I had to delay recording because I couldn't find my stylus. I knew that would happen eventually, I was just hoping that it would be more than four episodes in. But of course, this is me we're talking about, so not gonna happen. Get some ink pots right there, and let's step on the switch. Uh, the thing about blue switches that you should know is that they actually require the weight of both party members, so you cannot step on it unless both of you are together, so that's kind of why they're there. But it's not like it really matters, because if you try to put Cooney down and then try to leave, he will still won't let you anyway, so... Not really... too... worth pointing out, but, oh well, it's still something. Anyway, uh, here we have kind of a complex puzzle. I don't know why it was, like, complex, I don't know, maybe I just felt the need to enunciate, I really don't know, but... Anyway, time it well so that Cooney doesn't get hit by the spikes right there. You saw that I did it, like, right as the spikes went down before, so they would come up and then back down again. Uh, you want to move Chibi up here, press the switch, that'll make that bridge appear. We move Cooney over, wait f two years for him to walk slower than we do, despite the fact that we're a puppy and he's a fully capable of walking human. Which, by the way, um, I'm sure many of you are wondering, you know, why Susano and Kushi have a child that is able to talk and walk and all this stuff after just nine months. Well. It'll be explained later, don't worry. It's not a plot hole. It actually does get an explanation, but... Now that we're over here... This should look familiar to you guys. Yeah, I know. It's a brown path with walls. It's every current generation Xbox 360 game. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not bashing on the Xbox, I swear. But, in all seriousness, we are in the main part of the Cave of Nagi, right over here. We have a dragon figurine. That's a new antique for us that we haven't had yet. Okay, made by a uh, dragon figure made by an potter. We can't do anything about this rock yet, so how about we head up here? That statue looks kind of like my dad. But the sword is different. Susano is the greatest swordsman ever, but this, his sword is wrong. Think you could use your brush to do a little something about that? You bet we can. We gotta put the flower on the end of it, and Nagi, I am so sorry for defacing your grave, but it's worth it because Susano is truly the greatest warrior ever. There we go! And with this, we have found yet another deity. Don't worry, they're not going to be this common as we get further into it. They're just kind of establishing the really basic powers with us right now. So, got to trace the outline of this and prepare for cuteness overload. You thought the other gods were adorable? You haven't seen anything yet. Actually, I can... screw talking like that. It's like, you ain't seen nothing yet, is what I got to say. That's the way you do it. You think you've seen extreme cuteness yet? And I gotta say it like in a cute voice, I gotta be like, You ain't seen nothing yet! I don't know. I'm just being stupid at this point. But in all seriousness... Child of the Great Sun, we are the young Tachigami. We are servants of the Great Sun Goddess from time immemorial. Although we cannot follow you on your journey, we hope that our gift will be of service to you. May the Power Slash help you tear the darkness asunder. Oh, we'll tear it asunder, all right. This is the most practical power of them all. Probably the one you will be using the most. So now that we have the really practical stuff established, we can actually play the game the way it's kind of meant to be played at this point. So the Power Slash. Ethan told me stories about it. He said you can cut a rock in half with it, believe it or not. Okay. 
Now, this can also destroy things like pots. Unfortunately, they're not on screen for this tutorial for me to show you. But basically, what you want to do is through that red area on the rock where it's weaker, you want to just draw a line through it. And there you go. So, split something in half, just do it like that. Did that like have two eyes in it? It probably did. Got only four episodes and we've already found three typos. Things are looking great. It, Okami had a few typos in it as well, so it kind of gets a pass, but you get what I mean. Anyway, here, Power Slash tells us just standard draw a line through it to cut it in half with a straight line. You can only draw horizontal lines and only draw one at a time. Uh, strike multiple targets as long as the line is straight. So if you have enemies that are standing in a horizontal line, you can strike them to do a lot of damage all at one time, which is really useful. Though you're going to be using that in battle a lot. Uh, it also says that attacking multiple demons at once reduces the strength of Power Slash, though, so that's kind of something to remember. Um, you can also repel objects launched at you. This is actually a bit of foreshadowing. The enemy Yellow Imp is shown right there, which will launch a skull at you, and it's just kind of showing you that when you encounter this enemy, you can use your brush technique to deflect its projectiles back at it and stun it. So, Power Slash is used for more than just slashing things in two. It's got multiple uses, like I said, probably the most practical skill of them all. And we're going to get to show off of just how practical it is right here, because we have a battle. All right. So, a lot of them this time. This is why the Slush Brush is so handy. Okay, so. Watch this. Pay attention to their health. The blue health is how much damage it's doing, okay? Boom! Did like a third of the health to all of them. You can also do this a few different times. And they're just instantly stunned. We finish them off. Again, green imps do not have floral finishers in Okami Din, even though they did in the first one. But, there we go. They didn't even get to attack us. <laughs> so that's what I mean by how practical it is. Now, they're all not going to be this easy. Remember that green imps are the weakest enemy in the entire world. So, here we have a better example right here. Fighting the red imps. When they turn gray, there's actually something special you can do about them. You can power slash their top separate from them. It will destroy their top, and they will just turn into regular old... You know, they basically turn into green imps. Now, if you strike them, and then you power slash them as they go down, this is our first example of a floral finisher, you will get a demon bone. Unlike in Okami, where there were demon fangs for you to collect, there are multiple demon parts that you can collect. Different enemies drop different ones. Some of them will even drop multiples. But yes, uh, the use for those will come up a bit later, but just know that they are useful. Um, now that we've done that, though, that's pretty much how you're going to want to fight Red Imps. They're kind of the toughest enemy we're going to be fighting here for a little while. And yeah, they really are not that bad. Now, the only problem with Floral Finishers is... I uh, noticed that I'm not doing any combos there when he was low on health. That's because if Cooney gets the last hit, you don't get to perform a Floral Finisher. Cooney basically will kill Steel. I know, it's annoying. But, like they say, partners are only there to kill Steel from you. I don't know who says that. But I just did. So therefore, it is a thing. Now, make a TV Trust page about it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> With the Power Slash, we don't have to be afraid of any demons. Now stop going around and jump through that circle. You bet we jump through it. Jumping around, jumping through the portal to the next room is what you do in Capcom games. Case in point, Mega Man. I think you're going to be a good partner. But I think you need a new name if we're going to work together. It's got to be a strong name. And one that's easy to remember. Oh god, Chippy's afraid. I got it! Your new name is... Mutt! Poor Chibi! <laughs> because I don't know if you're a wolf or dog or what, just like most of the internet. So you're a mutt, what do you think? Okay, we got naming thing out of the way. <laughs> Guess I should be getting back now. <laughs> or should we go to Shinshu Field? Really? We have to... Yeah, you're right. I did promise to get that girl's mirror. I'm not afraid. I can do this. The only problem is Dad and the big rock blocking the road. I don't think he's going to let us out. Alright, so now we got to find a solution to the exact same thing that we had to find a solution to in the beginning of Okami. So, we are back here in Kamiki Village, back to really nice, relaxing music. And... Yeah, we've cleared our first dungeon. Wait a minute! Maybe the power slash cut more than just rocks. Why don't you try it on those stone lanterns? You mean paper lanterns? Okay, I had to make that joke. I mean, they are sprites after all. <laughs> anyway, 
yes, you can use them on objects like these lanterns, and they will frequently drop ink pots, and you'll get more ink pots than you had to use, so you'll have a net gain of them. I am such a nerd saying you're having a net gain in collectible. <laughs> ah, jeez. But yeah, uh, I think you can also use it on trees, I'm not mistaken. Yes, you can. You can cut down trees with it, and they will also give you ink. Everyone knows that ink grows on trees, I suppose. But yes. We uh, got ourselves a new power. We cleared the tutorial dungeon, I suppose is what you call it. And yeah, we came back here to Kamiki Village. So next time on Okami Den, we'll try to see if we can do anything about Susano blocking the exit of town. I don't know, though. He's a pretty great warrior. I don't know if we can overcome him, but see you guys then.